I've been working for Steve Harvey for 24 years, doing bodyguard work. I've met everyone in the business. Hey, man, I'm living the life. But I'll be the doctor to the doctor come. See, I didn't know how to read or write. Guess what? I just wrote my third book. I spent half my life breaking women's heart, and I have the key to women keeping their heart attached. I was a womanizer, now I'm a woman. Steve Harvey's former bodyguard, Mr. Big Boom, paid a visit and presented Marjorie Harvey with a gift. The following is what Cat Williams had to say regarding the conflict that seemed to be occurring at Hardy Paradise. Cat Williams has always been a source of frustration, but his most recent comments, in which he attempted to make light of Steve Harvey's suffering, have brought the issue to a whole new level. The comedian, who has had a long-standing dispute with Harvey, is said to have exploited the news of the alleged problems in Harvey's family as a punchline in one of his jokes. The enmity between the two men dates back many years. It's possible that a few years ago, we could have all laughed about it together. It's possible that Harvey isn't holding up so well in light of the fact that times have changed and men like Will Smith are hitting Chris Rock on stage for making a joke about their wife. Where do the lives of these two different persons begin to separate from one another? On the other hand, Williams and Harvey had a long-standing vendetta against one another. The most important question right now is whether or not Steve Harvey will consider this to be a low blow or a fair punch. In part, due to the success of his talk show, Steve Harvey has become one of the most influential characters in Hollywood. But he has also been at the heart of controversy after scandal throughout the course of his career. However, his fight with Cat Williams became one of the most well-reported incidents of his career. King Williams is a king in his own right as a sovereign nation. He is well known as a successful comedian and actor, but he also has a reputation for being a bit of a hothead. His comedy and acting careers have brought him a lot of attention. Therefore, it should not come as a surprise that the comic tried to portray Steve Harvey into a clown in order to make light of his pain. Nevertheless, the author may have gone too far with this interpretation. Recently, Steve Harvey was trending on Twitter for not one, but two different reasons. He began by issuing a challenge to his audience, asking them to name a Twitter comedian that was not entertaining. He stated that his social media manager had made the modification in an attempt to communicate with the public, but he nevertheless terminated the employee who was responsible for the insulting message. Despite this, there have been whispers going around that Steve and Marjorie's marriage is on the rocks. There were rumors circulating that William Big Boom Freeman, Steve's bodyguard and personal chef, had an affair with Steve's wife Marjorie Elaine Harvey. According to the allegations, she allegedly initiated a divorce proceeding and requested $200 million in damages. The announcement of Steve's wedding immediately spread over the internet, and people replied on a wide range of social media websites. Oh, I left alone first. No, I left alone first. No, you fool. No, you fool. <laughs> people at my church, you know, you can't get another divorce. Oh, yeah, I can't. Many people were taken aback when they saw a gentleman like Steve, who seemed to be knowledgeable about everything. It's all about maintaining a healthy dynamic in your marriage and the dangers of cheating. Others took advantage of the opportunity to poke fun at the person hosting the TV show. Another person had a similar idea when they issued the caution. Be careful with those whom you introduce into your circle. Insects that can penetrate fabric are often found in close proximity to one another. A six was drawn by the security guard. The unexpected appearance of Steve Harvey took me off guard. In order to advance in their careers, men require training in bodyguard services as well as home cookery. Let's just say that Cat Williams wasn't the only one who spotted the humorous possibilities in Steve's predicament. Let's just say that Cat Williams was one of them. The comic, on the other hand, does not shy away from placing Steve in socially awkward situations on several times. In 2008, the two started making fun of each other in the media by debating over who was the funnier of the two comedians. Steve Harvey definitely ought to have been more aware of the situation. It would have been more appropriate for him to put on a show than of billing it as a battle. A huge hurdle already awaits you the moment you enter a ring with which you are unfamiliar. At the time, there were rumblings that the couple was making these adjustments in order to be ready for a show that would run on New Year's on which they would appear. You, Cat Williams? Have you, for example, given Steve Harvey a call? But in Detroit, these two titans will square off against one another. Williams even made a public challenge to Steve Harvey, declaring that he would dethrone Harvey as King of Comedy at the New Year's Eve event that they were both set to present. Williams and Harvey were both scheduled to headline the program. Because of the event's growing prominence, more celebrities than originally planned were asked to take part in it. It seemed like taking a stance was going to be required. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get off stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time. The question that has to be answered is, who are you? Where do you stand in the debate between Steve and Kat? Only a few days before the performance, Steve Harvey shared with Jamie Foxx on his show that he wants to do the right thing and ignore William's threat. The conversation took place on Jamie Foxx's Fox Satellite radio program. On the other hand, he seems to be boxing and is wearing a robe. Williams spent the majority of the second segment of the show criticizing Harvey for a wide range of things, including the comedian's performance, his reputation, his clothes, and his haircut. Applause and support are much appreciated for Steve Harvey, Williams told the crowd. He's one of the best we've ever had, but the athlete chose not to participate in the activity himself. I don't see why he squandered all of your money on a ticket so you could listen to him fawn about some unknown lady in the audience for a quarter of an hour. On the other hand, he will not talk trash about his girlfriend to me in the same manner that I would speak trash about him. 
you should know that he wasn't allowed to come with me until he took off the shirt with the high-cut lace. When we have a disagreement, it never ends well. To put it another way, Williams obliterated Steve completely. The remark that Kat made to Steve Harvey off the record served as the impetus for Kat's talk program. As they made fun of Harvey's routine actions, he said that Harvey had stolen his style. Williams asserts that a person who was shot in 1968 thinks he was the offender responsible for the crime. Nigga, I'm the best shot in this place tonight. I'm the best. Williams told the audience that the two of them would be performing as co-headliners since Harvey was unable to sell enough tickets on his own to headline the event, and that by doing so, he dishonored the humorous legacies of many others who came before him, most notably Richard Pryor. Even while Harvey did not make any particular remarks regarding Williams' performance on New Year's Eve, he did make sure to deliver a message to Williams about their relationship in general. The message was directed toward Williams. My grandfather always told me that dogs don't bark at stationary cars, but only at those that are moving, Harvey remembered, referring to a previous family member. In addition to this, he said that dogs had a habit of howling at the moon, but that their notoriety would rise if the moon did the same. A dog will not make noise toward a car that is parked. They will only make noise in response to a moving vehicle. However, there is more to this story than first seems to be the case. Around the same time as D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac, Steve Harvey established himself as a comedic celebrity around 20 years ago. During their travels, the two guys gave performances as the original kings of comedy. The success of the program is not limited to monetary terms. In addition to that, it had a huge impact on the evolution of stand-up comedy. Cat Williams, on the other hand, is not a fervent fan of the job that they do. Williams and Harvey have been embroiled in a long-running argument, but it seems that one of Harvey's old pals may have been responsible for Williams' most recent reported attack on Harvey. Williams accused Harvey of punching him in the face. At the end of his performance at the Kings of Comedy event, Cedric told a joke about the difficulty of finding a space to park an Escalade Cadillac. Williams revealed to the Morning Hustle that the joke was initially his and that he was disappointed when he heard Cedric deliver it on tape. Williams made this statement on the Morning Hustle. When I realized it for the first time, I was utterly heartbroken since the comedian had already attained more popularity than I had, and he had taken credit for my most recent joke. And with that joke, he said goodbye to his time on the Kings of Comedy for good, Williams remembered. The effect was significantly heightened by being in the actual theater. The Kings of Comedy was really entertaining and well worth the ticket fee. The fact that my joke was the one that was posted shows the worst contempt for the work that we do together. Because it had to do with the pop musician Cedric, I guarded my feelings about it quite well at the time. Perhaps this explains why Williams looked to be flirting with Harvey the whole time. This is understandable given that he has only ever played in pairs with Steve out of the whole band. But that wasn't the end of Williams' explanations. I've worked enough hours on 10 different comedy programs since then. It's either that or come up with your own funny stuff. Or whether you like it or not, you're retelling my joke, Kate Williams agreed, saying that artists create from scratch or borrow bits and pieces from other sources. When asked whether he had spoken to Cedric about what happened, Williams said he had not. Fans feel that Williams's verbal assaults and challenge to a title fight with Steve Harvey were exemplary. A lot of people's conversations on Twitter and other platforms have revolved on it. Only one supporter appears to buy into all this crowding. The moment Ket Williams permanently fired Steve Harvey from stand-up is one I will never forget. Our film has reached its conclusion. Please share your thoughts on the topic below.